This is session number five in which inshallah we're going to be talking about the article of faith which is the belief in the books of Allah or the books of the one God. Now there are several um, of the books of Allah mentioned in the Quran. Of course we have the Quran itself which is mentioned in the Quran obviously but we also have um, others. So for example the Torah um, which is the book of Moses or Musa salam, the Zabur which is the book of Dawood um, and the Injil, which is the book of Isa or Jesus, peace be upon him. Now, I'm going to go through each one in turn, give you a little bit of information. It's very important uh, in order for us to understand our deen, that we understand that the Quran is the end product and the perfected product, the perfected way of life, that but has this message that has gone through uh, to mankind throughout uh, the other books is the same message essentially and the message of course is that we would believe in the one God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship him only so the Torah um, it's mentioned 18 times in the Quran and in Surah 5 verse 44 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we, we revealed the, the Torah which is a guidance and a light and this was actually revealed for the Jews, for the um, for the Jewish community through Musa Ali Salam. And um, actually, it's very interesting um, that even the, the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, there was a point where uh, the Jewish community actually approached him uh, for some advice on a matter. Um, a, a man and woman had been committing fornication or zina in Arabic. Um, and the, the Jews came to him to ask him for advice on the matter as regards um, what they should do with religious and um, the religious religious area so they asked him to go and judge in this matter so he said yes i'll i'll go and judge and they gave him a cushion to sit on and the prophet peace be upon him sat on the cushion and then asked them to bring the torah to him so subhanallah he asked them to bring their own book to him and he removed the cushion from under himself and put it down and actually put the Torah on top of the cushion and said to the Torah, I believed in you and in him who revealed you. So he was then affirming, and it was what amazing da'wah, that he was affirming to the Jews that it's part of the Islamic faith as well to believe in the Torah. And he actually then called them to, to bring one of their people of knowledge to help um, with judging um, and somebody who had the knowledge of the Torah and, and, and decided to, between these two people using that, using something that they knew and they could relate to. Now the Zabur was, it's, it's sometimes known, those of us who have been to church in the past um, and Sunday schools and stuff, it's known as the Psalms, the Psalms of David or Dawood and some say that that's what the, uh, the Zabur actually is. Uh, now the word Zabur comes from the Hebrew Zimra which actually means song, which links in with the Psalms because the Psalms are actually the songs. Um, it's mentioned three times in the Quran. In Surah 17, verse 55, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We gave to David the gift of the Zabur. Um, and there's a hadith in which the Prophet, peace be upon him, mentions that the, the reciting of the Zabur was made easy for Dawood alayhi salam to the extent that from the time it took him to ask his servants to saddle up the, the riding animals, the horses, camels, etc., to the time that the riding animals were actually saddled, it, he, if he started reciting at the beginning, then he would continue and he would have finished recite, reciting the Zabur when the, um, the saddles were on the animals, when they were ready to, uh, to travel. So quite a short, it was made easy on him. May Allah be pleased with him. Now the Injil, um, sometimes known as the New Testament, um, again for those of us who've um, been brought up as Christians, um, of course that was revealed to the Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And that is actually mentioned 12 times in the Quran. Now in Surah 5 verse 46, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And in their footsteps we sent Isa, or Jesus, son of Mary, confirming the law that came before him. We sent him the Injil in which was guidance and light and confirmation of the law that had come before him. So this is a confirmation in the Quran that again, 
the same as the Torah. It is uh, mentioned as a guidance and as a light. And also that um, adding on that it came to confirm what was before it. So it came to confirm for the Jews um, that the Torah um, was the word of Allah and this is what they should be following because the Jews at this point, the community, um, they, they, they needed another prophet um, and a reminder of the, the, the laws that um, Allah SWT had sent to them. Now, there's a very brief mention um, of the scrolls, the scrolls of Ibrahim or Abraham, um, and also a brief mention of the books of uh, Yahya, um, and the people who uh, followed him were the, called the Sabians. Now, we, we don't have any really knowledge of where those books are now. They're considered to be lost, unfortunately. Um, now... As, as, as Muslims we have to believe in, in all these books but we of course believe them in their original form now the people who believe in these books and follow these books i.e. the Christians and the Jews and Sabians if there are any um, they are considered and mentioned in the Quran as Ahl al-Kitab Ahl al-Kitab meaning the people of the book and they are very revered and put in a very high position in Islam um, and very very respected and also um, uh, protected under Islam now, the Qur'an, of course, um, how can we not speak about this book of Allah? This is the final and protected and perfected book of Allah. And it is actually protected by Allah from change and corruption. And Allah challenges people in the Qur'an saying, bring even a verse like it, bringing even a small verse like the Qur'an. And from then till now, nobody has been able to do this. And this stands right up until the Day of Judgment, this challenge. Now, the thing that's different about the Qur'an, uh, of course, is that it's perfected, but also that um, it, it contains many miracles. We have the miracle of the science, we have the miracle of linguistics, of mathematics. You can go online and you can look up all these things. There are books that you can read about this, absolutely amazing, that, that, that proves that the Qur'an is the word of Allah. That is also the fact that it is unchanged. The Qur'an was revealed 1500 odd years ago to um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was essentially uh, uh, a guy living in a desert who was illiterate. He didn't have a, a knowledge of these areas. He didn't even know how to read or write. Yet the Qur'an, which was this amazing linguistic miracle and scientific miracle, was revealed to him. It's also preserved in its original language. Muslims across the world, whether they're English like myself or from China or Pakistan or, or an Arab country, we all read the Quran in Arabic. Of course, we read the translation, but the translation is a translation of the Quran. It's not actually the original Quran. We always go back to the Arabic for this original meaning. And this, pre this preserves it. Um, now, it, the, the Quran, um, and these other books of Allah share a lot of similarities, one of which is that we we all, we all believe in the same God. Um, I remember when I was being brought up and I was introduced to Muslims, I used to think, what's this Allah, what's this God? And it was a big revelation to me when I realised that it's the same God. Allah is God, God is Allah, it's the same thing, like I said in one of my earlier sessions. So it's the same message. The message essentially is of Tawheed, believing in the, the oneness of Allah. Now. How should we approach the Qur'an is a totally different matter. We should approach it with an attitude that's called ikhlas. Ikhlas means that we have a purity, a pure attitude towards it. We have a pure intention that we're doing this for guidance and to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing and believing that this is the word of Allah. In Surah 6 verse 115, Allah says, Perfect are the words of your Lord in truth and justice. Now, the attitude is that we are approaching the Qur'an for guidance, but also to change ourselves. Allah says in the Qur'an, he will not change the condition of a people until they change what is within themselves, which of course is the heart, the actions, the deeds, the intentions. So we don't just approach the Qur'an as a storybook or tales of old. You should accept the Qur'an like Allah is speaking directly to you. Now, in Islam... Um, we have different sources of knowledge. The Qur'an, of course, is the foundation of knowledge and is the, the basis of all our knowledge. However, we also have um, two other areas. 
we have the, the which bring more context and more detail to the verses of the Quran and chapters of the Quran. We have the um, hadiths, which is the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which you do need to be very careful with and make sure if you're going to read a hadith, read it in the context of the sunnah, which is the practice and all the things that the Prophet, peace be upon him, actually did. So we have the Quran, the sunnah, and the hadiths, which are a triangle of knowledge. Usually when people make mistakes or get things wrong or get extreme and things like that, they're doing it because they have taken something out of context. So maybe they've taken a, a verse from the Quran and they've put the, uh, an incorrect interpretation. But if, then if they look at the, the, the context, what the Prophet, peace be upon him, did in these particular situations, it, it changes the meaning completely. So you must be very, very careful in how you approach the Quran and make sure that you don't take it as a black and white source. You have to take it in the context of what it's about or you might misunderstand what it's saying to you. Now, um, the Prophet, peace be upon him, of course, the reason why we have the Quran and the Sunnah and the Hadiths is because he was essentially the walking Quran. He was the embodiment of the Quran.